Hello, thanks for watching this video review. It's of a 1963 Remington 11 portable typewriter. A machine that was only manufactured for two years. Um, from 1962 until 1963, after which it was replaced by the Remington Fleetwing. These, uh, this particular model is painted in a rather handsome tea green and harbor grey two-tone color scheme. The video quality doesn't seem to be doing it any justice, but I can assure you it is quite pleasant in person. And by design they're very utilitarian, they feature the stereotypical Remington features of the 1960s, such as the square keys and this rather unusual color, or color, carriage return lever. I've given this machine a full service. It's tuned, oiled, cleaned, nice condition with the new ribbon. Mechanically or functionally, it's uh, very, very conventional. It has a backspace, it has a tabulator with keyboard operated set and clear, three position touch control, and a three position color selector, as well as a faceplate mounted toggle switch for the ribbon direction. And then it had here on the side, it has one, one and a half, and two line spacing. It's a ratchet release. Here's your carriage release. This particular margin is missing the plastic cap, but that's commonplace, it seems. They're easy to come pop off, and I've seen these gone a lot of times. Um, paper guide, here's a paper support, extendable. Three position paper bail. There's the plastic index card holders. And a feature that Remington introduced that I really like, which is the pincher ribbon vibrator where if you pinch these two bits together it's much easier to install a ribbon compared to um, Smith Corona's the, the the ribbon vibrators for example Smith Corona used at the same time which were a mess to deal with one thing that stood out with me servicing this machine is that they chromed a lot of parts on this so you know carriage turn lever and your paper bill are chrome that's no surprise but then if we go underneath the machine which will reflect how clean it is and in the condition that it's in now. Um, this bar here is the um, toggle for the ribbon advance. So every time you strike a key lever, this will flip, uh, flip down and it will advance the ribbon advance gears, one on each side. That's chromed. And then you have this cross piece here. That's chromed. And then the entire plate on which the escapement is mounted, as you can see, is also chromed. It is difficult to keep clean, but it can be made to look very good. As you can see, many of the components in there also chromed. And for a machine in the 60s, when they were starting to pinch pennies, and when it reached a point where uh, manufacturers were trying to find ways on which they could save money, it's surprising to see there is still um, that much eye to detail for these for one of these machines, uh, especially this not being one of Remington's top of the line. Um, at the same time these machines were manufactured, Remington was manufacturing quite a, a lot of other var variants of this typewriter. You had the Remington Monarch, you had the Fleetwing, you had the Traveler. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of. Uh, um, any others, but there there were more. There was also one with a curved body. That one was very beautiful. Um, and then, of course, at the st in, during that time, you also had the standards. You know, Remington Twenty Four. Although that was a later model, slightly. I have a I have a, tw um, a Remington Twenty Four, and that one's from nineteen sixty six. Anyways, uh, just pop the ribbon cover off. Heavy, heavy ribbon cover on these. The hinges on which uh, the clasps. Or the locking me mechanism of these Remington spool covers. I mean, there's a lot of weight to this, and that's quite a bit of over engineering here, considering the Fleetwing later on would just use two plastic prongs that would hold the cover down. And after 50 years of plastic warping, are impossible to take off half the time. This, however, works just as well as the day it made. A few scuffs here and there. But the paint overall on this typewriter is in nice condition. Now having a look inside, as you can see, more chrome. It's very clean in here. 
I've got about a day's worth of uh, work in this, and uh, the outcome is definitely uh, it, 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 I'm able to taste the fruits of my labor. These are these Remington spool covers they introduced in the 50s. I don't mind these, they work well. Um, half the time, if you look in here, you see that the ribbon is fitted on this metal ring that goes around the shaft in which is the mechanism for the auto reverse. This system eliminates the need for the eyelids or the eye rings. I'm not sure how you would call those at the end of a ribbon. It doesn't matter if it has it or not, it will auto reverse the ribbon. The thing is these are half the time missing. Now you can thread the ribbon into that bare, but it's I don't advise it, it doesn't work very well. So this machine still has both of them, which is a plus because they're unobtainable. See if I can put this back in without misshaping it some, in some way. There we go. Put a surface sticker on it. It has pica font. As you can see it's very clean in there. It has a sticker on the front of the right spool carrier and it says for best results specify Remington carbon paper and ribbons. And then it says, install ribbon here in this direction. With an arrow pointing what I believe to be the wrong way, because the ribbon spool threads around the spool in this fashion on this side, and in this fashion on that side. Yet, the arrow is pointing to the right. So in my book, the only way I can imagine... Oh, I see what they did there. Scratch that thought, I see what they mean with it. It's not very clear, but it, I can understand what they mean with it. Anyways. There's the serial number. HRE120324. Very satisfying click when you put the uh, ribbon cover back on. And there you have it. It's a... Uh, Remington 11. This is the case for it. It's a little shabby, but it still gets the job done. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this rather brief video review of this typewriter. I will follow up with a typing sample. And of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave me a comment. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a nice day!